when people get started with Python or any other programming language, let's talk about Python in particular, what tools should they use? Especially if, let's say we start with Git, like version control system. Yeah. What, sure. what else would you recommend to them? Well, I think there's a suite of tools that you should have. I think sometimes people want to start with really simple text editors and they want to start with simple text editors because they feel like I want a simple experience. I don't want all this complicated things. I want a real simple experience to keep things nice and easy. Um, maybe it's Jupyter Notebooks as well. But what I find is a lot of these tools, they, they don't su provide enough support. What I mean is, you know, maybe somebody says, well, I'm going to use Notepad++, right? Okay, so you start typing and like that, that's a tool that will, will sort of give you a little bit of help, but it maybe doesn't understand like these three files linked together in this way. And if you type, it's actually referring to this thing. So it's you know what the answer is and you just got to gotta type it out, right? So I feel like a lot of people sort of fumble along with writing code instead of using powerful editors that can write write it for you, right? So sort of a rule that I have is if you're typing out variables and things that those can do, if you're typing more than three characters to, to get that section to do something, you're probably not using the right tool, right? So if it's, you know, you're talking to some database, you're like a data layer and it says like, there's a function that says, you know, create new user, you should be able to type CNU and that like just writes the whole rest of that for you, <laughs> you know, or CRE and the creators right there, pick it. Right. And so I would really encourage people to use like proper editing tools. So in the PyCharms, sorry, the Python world spa space, I would say PyCharm and VS Code are probably the two tools that you want. You got to install the tooling within VS Code. Um, yeah, it isn't, it isn't you, just yeah. just to interrupt you here with PyCharm. I think it isn't too straightforward because you have a special class on your website for PyCharm specifically, right? Mm, yeah. The thing is, it's easy to make it do 20% of what it does, but it has all these features that like nobody knows about or nobody uses. Uh, but once you know them, they're, they're pretty awesome. So I think a, a, picking a good editor is a really important thing to do. And I, I wouldn't shy away from... You know, spending an hour or two to just become familiar with better tools because it'll pay off. Exactly. Definitely. I think also there's a few just programming ideas that you should invest a little bit of time in that that don't take a lot, and we can touch on what those are. I do think that source control is super super important, and you mentioned Git. Mm -hmm. Git is what I use. I, I used to use Subversion, but obviously the entire world has moved to Git, mostly because of open source, right? Um, Git is one of those source control systems that's distributed, which means I can go find a project that's interesting, make sort of a, a remote clone of it or a local clone of it that I can work on. And then if I want to contribute back, I can push it back, as opposed to the traditional ones where you have to ask permission to work on a project at all. But I feel like Git can be pretty scary, especially if you're not coming from the com uh, computer science side. You go and look and say, okay, I need to learn Git apparently. I, I really need to get into source control. I know that's something I need to do. But you go and look on YouTube, you go look for some courses, and there's all these complicated s command line commands people are typing. And it's fine until it doesn't work, then you go, oh, now I've got to merge this, or I've got, like, there's all these challenges, you're like, oh, this is so frustrating. Um, why can't, why do I have to do this? So what I would encourage people to do is there's some really nice UI tools for working with Git, right, in like a real simple way. So four that come to mind, I guess, real quick is uh, GitHub itself has a desktop yeah. application, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's pretty nice. I don't use it at all, but uh, I've used it before, but I don't use it currently. There's uh, one called uh, Source Tree, mm -hmm. which is really nice. That's the one I use. It's a little more advanced, but it does everything that you would possibly ever want to do in the command line in a UI, which is nice. And it has hotkeys and whatnot, which is cool. Um, and then I mentioned those two editors, VS Code and PyCharm. They both have really good Git integration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like for example, I was I was looking through the C Python source code. This is the source code that 
that is the program that is Python. Like when you run Python, this is the thing that it is written. In, that's actually written in C. And for some random reason, uh, I was digging down into the internals of it with VS Code. And actually, in VS Code, it'll show you on every function. It'll put like a little gray line that says who did what to this thing last, without even typing. And so you could see like. Guido von Rossum, uh, you know, added, made this change to it in like 1997 or something. You're like, wow, how interesting. <laughs> Look at the history you see of like this old complicated project mm-hmm. as you go through it, right? So, you know, the, the fundamental problem that you solve with something like get any sort of source control is, you know, I'm sure many people who are getting into programming have done this or have seen this done is, if you, you want to make a change to your program, but you, you've got it working, right? And you're like, oh, I really don't want to touch it. It's working. Uh, I want to try re- changing the stuff around, but, but it's working. And so what you end up with is a, like maybe the file three or four times, like version one, version two, version three, or like a zip file of the project with like a date or something, you know, and just that way of organizing, it's, it's not ideal right yeah. and if you if you put it into source control you can just go into these tools and go go back to the way it was you know yesterday or show me how it's changed from this time to that time and it gives you this fearlessness to explore and to try so you can just say you know what i'm going to make sure it's committed to source control and then i'm just going to go do crazy stuff and if it goes wrong yeah right click revert and it's boom it's right back to the way it was or you can create a branch and just go crazy and go you know what that branch is no good or it didn't go where i want put it away, uh, go back to the original, right? There's just this this ability to just try things out without consequence that you get to adopt once you pick up some of these source control tools. So Git, I think, is great. It's a little scary because it has all these different commands and multiple stages to get anything done. But with the UI, it makes it pretty simple.